This is Comics Coast to Coast. Everybody, this is Brian Dunaway, and you're listening to Comics Coast to Coast, episode 335, The Andy Dugan Interview, part two. That's right, Andy's back. Before we talk to Andy, let's talk to Joel Duggan. A star cross line, he's not here. No Joel, no Joel from Star Crossed Online again. We Boo. miss him. Boo. He was here right briefly before the show. He was here for like just a second, and then he lost power. We're assuming bad things have happened. Joel sitting in the dark and, and brooding and, and pouting about not being here today, especially after missing last week as well. We miss you, Joel Duggan. So visit StarCrossedOnline.com and also visit ForgePublishing.com. Follow Joel. Also with us tonight, though, is here Matthew Ducharme. How are you? I am just dandy, sir. You are dandy. I want to get a shirt that says, I'm just dandy. Because <laughs> that would be my thing for you. I'd send it to you for Christmas. Wait for it. It's on its way. With us tonight is our special guest, Andy Dugan. Uh, you may remember last year we talked to Andy. Uh, he was working on cclopscomics.com. He's still doing it, but he also has a new project he's going to tell us about very shortly. Andy, welcome back to the show. Thank you for allowing me to come back. Uh, apparently, I didn't offend you uh, when I was here before, and I'm very grateful. We missed you. <laughs> we missed you lots. So the last time we talked, uh, you were you were hard at work on on the Cclops comic. Uh, yep. So, so if you don't rem if you don't mind, remind our listeners who you are and uh, what you do. Yeah, um, as you said, I'm Andy Dugan, mm. and uh, I am a, a comic artist. Mm -hmm. I started uh, about 2012. I uh, did my own web comic, Cclops Comics, which is on a uh, hiatus right now. Because when paid work comes in, oh. that takes priority over yes. the free web comic. Yes, <laughs> it does but, indeed. Yep, yeah, but now I'm uh, I'm out spreading the word about my new Kickstarter for my book, Blackfin the Barbarian Shark. What? Hold on a second. First of all, I love the name Blackfin. Second of all, I'm a huge Barbarian fan. So you got me at Aren't Barbarian, we all? right? Hey, my favorite Barbarian is the Conan type, but I'll right. take I'll take just about anything. Do you have a pr I'll preferred? Take whatever Barbarian you throw at me. Yeah, do you have a preferred Barbarian? Is there a is there a, is there a classic? Uh, oh, there's you? so many. Uh, yeah. I love Conan. Yeah, uh, you know He Man, very Barbarian esque. He, he is. <laughs> He's like a space Barbarian. He's a space Barbarian of the universe. I like it. Uh, I. I'm a big fan of him. Uh, um, who else is there? Uh, There's uh, Gru, is it there? He's yeah, a yep. He's uh, <laughs> he's still one of those. <laughs> we also have uh, oh, we, we hey Joel, quick, no, where's Joel at? Not you, Joel. Hey, Matt, <laughs> Matt. <laughs> I already said Gru. Oh, you already uh, said. Oh, you did say Gru. I didn't hear you say Gru. I'm sorry. I said I thought I said that. So I actually I heard I heard myself say it, but it was really you. I got you. <laughs> There's a severe lack of uh, of uh, barbarians on the market right now. Right, uh, Conan. Well, that, the bar that's why you're here. That's, right. You know what? I saw a I saw a hole and I decided to step in, fill it up. <laughs> that's it. Barbarian. That's right. So so uh, ten ten famous comic book barbarians from Cerebus to Conan. We got Adrian the Barbarian, Barrack the Barbarian, Slain, Wolf. Santa the Barbarian. What? See, what? You, when you have to make a list and you're looking for stuff like that to fill up 10 spaces, right. I feel like you don't have 10 Barbarians. I think you're out of Barbarians. I agree. Okay, so anyway, so that was a fun little rabbit hole rundown. So tell us about this uh, this Kickstarter project. You say it's a book. Uh, how, how, yes. how big is this book going to be? 32 pages, so it's not, it's not Monster. It's, uh, you know, it's... Uh, I guess almost what old comics used to be before they cut down and started uh -huh. throwing ads in there. But it is, uh, it's full of story and well worth it. Oh yeah. No kidding. So you can go, you can find out more about this by simply going to kickstarter.com and search for, 
you just just look, would it be a search for you or for the comic itself? Uh, you could search for Blackfin. Blackfin. Um, that should come up. Also, uh, I have a tiny.cc slash Blackfin that should take you right there, too. Ooh, I'm going to do that now. A tiny.cc four slash Blackfin, one word? Uh, yes. Oh, look at you. How did you secure that one? That's all. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I went wrong. <laughs> You took a wrong turn. I took a wrong turn. Anywho, visit Kickstarter. Back, my friend, here. We still have, uh, what do you have, close like to 20-something days as of this Thursday, 7-26-2018. Is that about right? Yeah, yeah. Yesterday was the launch day, so we are into day two. Wow. Already we're well on our way. It was a really exciting, really exciting first day. Right, right. I'm very excited for you. I'm glad you're getting some success. Uh, you getting most of that from uh, from word of mouth and possibly your Instagram and Twitter feeds. Uh, you know, Instagram is a big thing for me. Especially, yeah. You know, for artists, that's that's pretty much the the go to. There's yes. less talking, more pictures. Right. Right. Um, so that's kind of cultivated a following on there. It's a lot of word of mouth. Um, you know, since we last talked, there's been a lot of a lot of stuff from going from Cyclops to. I worked on a book that was, you know, published through Diamond all over the world, which was really cool. That was Hero Cats. Yes. That allowed me a lot of a lot of really cool stuff, um, meeting a lot of people. And yeah, so a, a lot of my backing so far is just people who have met me through some of my other projects. Right, right. Uh, so you, you mentioned Hero Cats. I think we, uh, Stellar City, I think we briefly mentioned it last uh, last podcast. Uh, you did, I uh, think, like issue 22 or something like that, 22 and 23. You did like... I did 19, 20, and 21. Ah, yeah, yes. Three issue arc. Three issue arc. Excellent. So is is Hero Cat still going on? Is that like a continuing story that's still happening? It is. Uh, that was the end of season one mm-hmm. of Hero Cats, and I don't think that it's been announced yet when season two starts. Um, I may be a part of it at yeah. some point. There's like, It's kind of a rotating artist. Yes. Uh, type of book but i was really happy to do the three issues i did it's a it's a fun all ages book uh, about exactly what it sounds like they are hero cats uh not really the superhero kind but kind of adventure and Hmm. i got to draw a lot of monsters my first page i got to draw a giant snow monster and i was i was happy from then because i was like you know before this how many cats have I drawn in my career? I could probably count on one hand. Really? Uh, yeah. Very hard creature to draw. Yeah. And then, so that that took some work, but you know, it was a great, it was a great thing. It was really exciting. I got to see myself in the previews book and all this stuff. I got copies at local comic book stores. I got to do signings, and that oh, all that fun. was great, and led to so much more. Fun. So, oh, you you mentioned that cats are hard to draw, and I think you're. You're right, but once you figure it out, I think people just, oh, they just go nuts. It's like, oh, now I can draw a cat. That's it. Everything yeah, I draw I now. Yeah, uh, uh, the South Carolina con. Oh, yes. Uh, and I was there with the kind of Hero Cats team, and I just spent three days drawing people's cats because <laughs> people love their cats. What? The <laughs> internet loves their cats and other <laughs> people's true. cats. Uh, I know you try to do all this stuff. You're like, look at all these cool monsters, and you draw a cat. People are like, I love that cat. I love like, oh, that cool. cat. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, man. I, I'm with you. I'm I'm all about drawing the the monsters, but cats are fun to draw, and it's also an easy resource for me because I have two of them in the house. Just try to hold them down and pose them, and see oh how easy that is. Gosh, they <laughs> just—it's hard to draw them because if you got one in your in your face, you, they're not going to let you draw. So I mean, no. yeah cats no they they move weird they're they they're like accordions they right. shrink down and they stretch out they're really unnatural right. like terrible demon animals but you know it's right. great what was that so Matt? The internet theory that uh cats are actually liquid yes I, I believe it yeah it's a true story it's a true story and it's, it is a good theory uh oh so hero cats you can uh you can check that out you say that is uh, who publishes that? That is a that was Action Lab. Action Lab. That's right. So you can yeah. head over to just Google Hero Cats. I'm not here yeah, to tell you how to get on the internet. It's, it's yeah. everywhere. It's at your local comic book store. Right, man. But really, issues 19, 20, and 21 really the only ones that matter. Yeah, um, that's the de facto collection right there. That is the peak, I would say. <laughs> oh come on! Surely you must have at least <laughs> one other favorite artist. You're like, oh man, 
No, they that guy they've had some great artists on there, and yeah. it felt like coming on at the end. It's like okay, now do better than all of these people, <laughs> or at least don't don't screw it up right at the end. You know, that's kind of a unique pressure working on. A, I've, I've <laughs> yeah. never wor- I've never worked on any of these uh, anthology type collections, and I, I've always wondered what it was like working on that because it is it's, it's you got to look at who's before you, and I'm sure you kind of flip through with some and go, I can do better than oh, that. Yeah. I can do better than that. <laughs> and other people are like, oh my god. Why didn't y'all just stop here? This guy's phenomenal. Yeah. Or a gal. So, yeah, it's just, what do you do? Uh, so, so, whenever you do, whenever you take on a project like that, uh, do you have, do they give you, like, a lot of backstory? Or do they expect you to go back and read? Do you have control over the story you're writing? Or is it more of a, they write it and you illustrate it? It was, uh, I got sent, the writer mailed me mm-hmm. um, quite a bit of uh, the previous issues and, some volumes and stuff, and I perused through those. I found definitely what I thought would pertain to the one that the issues I was drawing. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely read those a little bit closer and did a lot of samples. Right. <laughs> a whole lot of samples. How about this? No. How about <laughs> no. this? Do you know? That, okay. That's a dog. That is not a cat. Right. Oh, ah, draw cat. I love it. All right. So, uh, you know what? I don't want to get stuck stuck on Hero Cats because we got so much to talk about with you. Uh, I recently got stuck on something called Magic: The Gathering. It's a card game. If you're I've not heard familiar of that. with it, yeah, a few people yeah. have heard of it. It's uh, it's a couple it, people do play that. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a well-known battle card uh, a game system. Uh, and my my oldest son, he 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 brought home some cards and says, "We've never played this." We've played plenty of Yu-Gi-Oh! and Pokemons and all this other stuff, but here's Magic the Gathering. I'm like, okay, let me see this stupid thing. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, dang, this game is spot on. Crap, why haven't we played this before? So uh, Magic the Gathering, very well thought out. I'm not telling anybody anything new, but it's just such a well thought out <laughs> game. And I'm really digging the art. The art is some of my favorite parts of it. I, yeah. I really dig the vampire uh, type stuff that, that's in there. Also like the dino stuff. They got some dinosaur stuff. Uh, so I know you work on some cards, not necessarily battle cards, but you work on some right. other cards and stuff. So tell us what's going on in the card industry. Yeah, that's one of the next things I was working on was uh, working with Tops, mm. doing some Star Wars cards, working with Upper Deck, doing some Marvel cards and uh, Stranger Things. And Ooh. there's a lot of people who do these. Uh, they're, you know, artist cards that you might pull out of a pack, but it's a. It's a really good thing, and what I ended up using it a lot for is uh, they're great ways to warm up, mm-hmm. and also they they you know they turn into a job. But right, like I was saying before, I'm while we're talking, I'm sitting here working on color in a uh, a Thorbuster Iron Man, oh. not Hulkbuster, Thorbuster. I don't know what that is, so now I'm super excited. A Thorbuster, <laughs> yeah. I oh, it was a thing. Yeah, thing. I'm googling it now. I've never even heard of the Thorbuster World it's War. It's like Iron Hulk. Man with a with a weird thing on his head. Oh, interesting. Well, that's what <laughs> Iron Man does. World War Hulk versus a Thorbuster and Iron Man. So that's uh that's a thing. I I haven't really gotten into the World War Hulk stuff. Uh, so maybe that's the reason why I never saw the Thorbuster either. That's interesting. Now I guess something something new to do. You, have you watched the World War? Hulk series, don't they have like that on Hulu or something, I believe? Is that I know it was like a cartoon movie, wasn't it? I believe you're right. I believe you're right. Matt I have you... not seen that. I haven't either. Matt, do you watch any of that stuff? I don't usually watch the cartoon stuff just because of, you know, a little bit of an animator snob and oh, <laughs> tell you know, oh. Chuck Jones or die. Well, with most of them you can tell they've outsourced to like cheapo overseas animation houses right what some of them can be great though like uh you know batman mask of the phantasm is a oh yeah one. oh you know, yeah that's good every once in a while they can do it just right yeah let's face it i typically we 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 know uh as consumers that the dc animated stuff is generally gonna be a little higher quality than the marvel stuff not say the marvel yeah. stuff is is trash even though matt is that's what matt's saying i'm saying <laughs> I thought you were saying Matt was trash. <laughs> like, <laughs> even though we know that Matt is. But uh, so yes, yeah, so it's 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 a good point, Matt. Oh, by the way, I'm watching Dinosaur King in the morning times now. You watch that? Yeah, that's an arcade game and a cartoon. You're welcome. And a card game. 
What? Talk about some trash. Bring it <laughs> on, baby. Bring it on. Brian likes the trash. All right. So, but that's great. I'm I'm excited about that. Where where do I do I just go to Tops to pick up these cars? Do I go down to my local grocery store like Publix or do I go to Walmart? How do I get some Andy Dugan cards in my hands if I really wanted some? <laughs> well, you uh you order a couple hundred dollars worth of cases and you just open packs and hopefully you'll find oh, one. It's, is, they're, they're that kind. <laughs> it's that game. Oh, yeah, no. It's, it's that game. <laughs> <laughs> well, they used to call Magic the Gathering back in college tragic the spending. No, <laughs> I like it. Hey, do you play Magic the Gathering any, Matt, or ever have, ever have? Uh, it, my pals and I used to play it back in college. I never really got that into it, but I have friends who, uh, they'd be significantly further along in their financial life without <laughs> it. That's great. Yeah. My, my, my son is 20 and he has his first real job. And so he's got, he's still living at home and he's got some disposable income. So he's like, Hey, do it now while you can go spend that magic, the gathering money, my friend, because in about a in about a year or two, you can have a mortgage. Then what? Then what? Yeah. Just watch out. You may have to have an intervention when shoeboxes <laughs> get involved. Oh, there's already shoeboxes. There's been car- <laughs> oh, shoeboxes. What are you talking about? We, how do you think Andy makes so much money? We, uh, we buy all <laughs> the cards and then we open up the packs. Like, ah, oh. that's great. No, I would love to. I, I hope that I do get to see one of your cards in the wild. Now, will you, do you, when you go to like conventions and stuff, do you uh, take some of the cards with you? Do they send you samples? Yeah, I get artist proofs oh, nice. um, that I'm allowed to uh, do with what I want. Um, so I can sell those. And I tend to, if I finish a set and I get the approval to show them off, I try to show them all off on my Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, they're they're just kind of a fun little thing that... Oh, uh, yeah. they're, they're a, It's a cool way to be like, look, I drew Spider-Man. Look, I drew... The and rhino. The, look, I don't they, know why I'm all thinking of uh, <laughs> Spider-Man and related. That's what I was about to say. You mean the rhino from Spider-Man? From, yeah. From the Spider-Man? Right from the Spider-Mans. So that's that's fun. So I guess you get to say, ha, look, I drew this Spider-Man, and they paid me to do it. Can <laughs> yeah. you believe it? Suckers. That's great. Andy, that's great. I, I would. Lo- I hope I can catch one of those in the wild one day, and I'm going to be looking. Do you get to put your name anywhere on the is – there, is there like a place to put – who you are? Well, I know. I just had to pick it up and go. Uh, it looks like Andy's working. Do they or do they credit people? <laughs> no, I get to you sign the backs of all of them. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. all right. It's I'm, fun. I'm ordering a pack now. Jeez, I'm gonna be so broke. Good. I'm sure it'll have one of mine in it. Thanks a lot, Andy. All right. <laughs> so you mentioned Instagram. How is the Instagram family treating you? Looks like you're swimming in some feedback over there. Looks like every time I see you post something, people go like, "I like this, Andy. Thanks a lot." Does that feel good over there on the Instagram? It feels good. It's a it's an addiction. It is you an gotta addiction. Get, gotta get them likes. Yeah, you do. That's what drives yeah, but you. It's uh that's that's my preferred way, like I said before, and uh I, I try to keep it updated. Um I like their little feature that's like share to Tumblr, share to Twitter. Yes. All that. Because I can only keep up with so many of these. Right. These social medias. I'm done with the social medias myself. I, I drop in every once in a while just to say, hey, and here's a deal, or you know, or I'll be on a show or stuff like that. By the way, you can follow uh, Andy Dugan uh, on Instagram.com forward slash Andy underscore Dugan underscore art. Uh, Dugan is spelt with a D U G A. I did it wrong. D U G G A N. So that's Andy Dugan art on Instagram. Uh, Give him a follow and give a little feedback. He said he posts the cards on there. Maybe I don't need to buy any. I'll just look at the proofs and print them out print of my out. print them out of my yeah. printer and and like <laughs> in seventy two DPI. It'll be it'll be fantastic. I'll print it out full screen on a big old eight by eleven Pixel sheet of paper. Power. Right, pixel power. It'll be terrible. So we mentioned cons. Are you headed to RobCon this weekend in Kingsport, Tennessee? I am. It sounds like you almost made a note of that. I put in my <laughs> notes, RobCon this weekend, question mark. Kingsport, Tennessee, question mark. First time, veteran. What's the scene like, man? Tell us all about it, Andy. Now, this is my first uh, my first time at this con, but I'm uh, no stranger to cons. Um, 
I got to attend my biggest one this year. I, I was at C two E two in Chicago, uh, which was nice. crazy. Uh, you know, eighty thousand plus people, and that's actually where I came up with the uh, idea for Blackfin. Was I was sitting there doodling? I drew a commando shark. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's cool. What other kind of shark should I draw? <laughs> and so I drew that. But yeah, the the convention thing is uh, is definitely a big part of the uh, my artist life. Right. Wait a minute. I got to hear more about the commando shark. So is it is it Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, a la commando? Kind See, of now shark? you're starting to pull out the the secret. It seems like right. everything I do is just take Arnold Schwarzenegger's movie and then make him a shark. <laughs> Next is going to be Kindergarten Cop, or oh, Kindergarten Shark. Cop that's or good. I would love to see that. How about a uh, How about a uh, Shark and a Half with uh, Burt Reynolds? How about that? You know you want uh, to. Ooh, twins, and it's like oh. uh, it's like uh, him and I don't that's know so some small cool. aquatic creature. Oh, that's great. Hey, you know what? We just uh, you, you listen to Frog Pants shows. We just did. Uh, we just did Suburban Commando on a <laughs> film sack, which was originally, and I had no idea. The movie that we watched recently was Suburban Commando. It uh, it was uh, Christopher Lloyd and uh, is the as the nerd. Imagine that. Mm-hmm. And 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 then Hulk Hogan is the tough. You know the big tough guy. And uh, yeah. it was originally written for Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito. It was supposed to be that, but they they decided to do twins instead. Good pick. Oh. I've, I've seen both. Was it? I've I've seen both. And I didn't think I would say good pick on twins, but good pick. It was good pick. Uh-huh. Um, that's great. So let's get back to Black Fitness a little bit. You say you you had the epiphany there at the con. Always a great place to have epiphanies. It seems like that's where I usually yeah. get my creative energies too, because you you work so. You're hard. surrounded by that. Yeah, too. surrounded You're by s- people creating, and I was I was around some so many big people that yes. I would just like take a break, walk up and down the aisle, and just kind of. Uh, nerd out to everyone who was there. That it's, was really, really cool. It's really good because it, it really gets your mind outside of the day to day. You know, you, you're yeah, you're working your daily schedule and everything, and it's hard to really be super creative. And then you get away from there, and it's like all oh, this, all this creative energy, and you feel like everything you say, it's like being, it's like being drunk. It's like, uh, <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, I'm a, I'm a genius, I'm a genius, and you come up with these great ideas at cons, but they actually are usually pretty good ideas, unlike. What happens when you get drunk? It's just <laughs> it was always a bad idea. But uh, well, another wild thing about cons, if if you're going as an artist and you have like a table or in your or you're in artist alley, like so you wear two hats at the same time. So yeah, you're the artist and you're showing off to people, but then you walk around and like suddenly you're the fan. Oh yeah, it's great that switch. I bought plenty of uh, other people's stuff while I was there. I hardly made any money because it all went back into everybody else's pocket. <laughs> it's a scam. <laughs> it does. It happens so often. I like the fact that uh, when Matt said you were wearing two hats, I thought he was talking literally. I was trying to think. <laughs> so do you have they like put a... me on the uh, the hat aisle? Right. Uh, everyone wasn't really artists. It was just for people who wear silly hats. Right. You can sit on her aisle, but you got to wear these two hats. <laughs> Come on now, art boy, draw it up, draw it up. I so, just pictured a top hat with like a backwards baseball cap on. <laughs> Ooh, on top or of it, the giant, the giant uh, cowboy hat, and you pull it yeah. off, and there's a tiny cowboy hat underneath. So it's like the hidden double hat. <laughs> I would love that. So our, our next comic will be a uh, shark hat. <laughs> tune in, tune in next week, right? So, all right. So, Blackfin. Let's get back to this uh, Kickstarter project. Uh, Blackfin, uh, Barbarian yeah, I Shark. Yeah, I want to mention. I want to mention something really cool about it. Yes. Um, I, I mentioned it in the video. Uh, I need to start posting everywhere else. Uh, did you see who is lettering the book? I did, but I want you to reveal it on the show because yeah. I was like, oh, cool. Yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, Richard Starkings, who yes. is uh, one of, if not the most famous letterer in comics. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is the letter of Batman Hush, Batman yes. Killing Joke. He is the writer of Elephant Men for Image, which just recently uh, was one of the uh, flagship books in the Comixology Amazon, their own imprint. Yes. He has another book there, uh, Ask for Mercy, that is blowing up. And he is gracious enough to be the letter on my book, which That's doesn't great. sound big, but oh, if there's a bad letter, you notice it. Right. So. 
It is big because it, it's going to be beautiful. It sounds big on this podcast because we're all a bunch <laughs> of comic nerds and you know yeah. comic creators, and it means something to us. But you're right. If you went down the street, if you went to Starbucks and went, "Hey, guess who's lettering my book?" You'll never guess. Richard Stark. They, uh, they still make comics, right? Pretty much. So, I mean, <laughs> you're you're in the right group for that to be exciting news. And uh, I'm totally excited about that. I can't wait to, to see how that turns out. So have you actually, have you got to work with him much yet? Have you got to talk to him much or just kind of met up? Uh, yeah, that was one of the, when I was talking about um, kind of my my path I've been going on, I was actually doing a signing for the, my first issue of Hero Cats at a comic book store. And this guy came in and he was like, hey, did you do this book? And I said, yeah, this is, uh, you know, this is my first issue. I'm going to be doing three issues. And he's like, oh, well, my name's Richard and I'm the, the writer of Elephant Men for Image. Mm. And like I had volume one of <laughs> Elephant Men at my house at the time on the shelf. Like, oh, my gosh, this guy just walked in. He's like, hey, <laughs> I'm that guy. <laughs> right. That's and, me. Uh, yeah. He uh, That's he funny. became a really good friend uh, while he was in San Diego on the Comixology panel doing all that fun fun right. stuff uh me and my girlfriend were cat sitting for him <laughs> so, oh nice yeah so we're really good friends now but he's he's been such an awesome like role model and person that i can bounce ideas off of yeah and I, so when i mentioned i was doing this kickstarter he's like oh let me letter it i was like great. i'm not gonna tell you no that is great so i lo- also love the little the little aside you threw in there oh and by the way i've, I've cat sit for him so it's like, yeah. I'm like, how did that open up? He's like, oh, I see you draw a comic about cats. I have cats. <laughs> you should watch it for me. I'll letter your comic. That's the yeah. kind of, that's what I want to hear. That's the, it's a, fun, it's a funny, uh, you know, it, without all the pieces in the middle, it's like you draw right. comics about cats. I right. Bet you can watch one. <laughs> I bet you can watch one real good. You got to yeah, be there, able there's to. There's a lot in between, but yeah, yeah it's funny. That's that's good. I I like this. So that's actually a great story. I'm pretty excited about that. So, uh, you've already got everything planned out, right? You got your what? Do you, so, what's the end goal for your Kickstarter project? Have you already got the story written out, and you just need to illustrate it? What's the Kickstarter for? Is it actually to uh, get it to print? It is to get it to print. Uh, you know, that's sadly what ends up being costing the most money i'd love mm-hmm. to just do comics all the time i could you know crank out one every month but the the right. printing is really what costs costs yeah. a lot of money it does so this is uh this is me coming to coming to the people and trying to get this book out there and hopefully they they really dig the idea and i'm excited i just want to make something really fun you know right. sometimes comics can be very um either political or yes dark and that's great and some people do that really well but a lot of times i just want to read something that i look at and go that was awesome yeah don't we don't we have enough i mean okay look don't anybody get you know get all (laughs) hurt or nothing but don't we really have enough of the seriousness right now don't we have enough of the the serious and the anxiety and the and the turmoil DC movies yeah the dc (laughs) movies don't we want something silly like a shark that's a barbarian i do we used to know how to do that back in the 80s. It's like, you know what, dude? We should totally make an, a comic about some turtles that are ninjas and, or, you know, and yeah. have, you know, and are, are irradiated. That sounds like fun. Yes, yes, please. Give me more of that. I used to buy some of my favorite comics. I loved the series comics too back in the day, but some of my favorite comics was stuff like, uh, oh, both, both of them, DC and Marvel, both had like different. Uh, Captain Carrot or Amazing Carrot? What is it? which which one's worthy? Captain with it? Carrot, yeah. Captain Carrot, and uh, those Captain Carrot and the Zoo Crew. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, those are stupid fun. Just stupid yeah. fun. Loved him. Loved him. <laughs> well, it looks like DC, at least on the movie side, may be lightening up a bit. Yes. Did you see the trailer for Shazam. Yeah. 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 That actually looks pretty fun. Let's do it. Bring me something yeah. fun, DC. Bring me. Yeah, something. I'm excited for that, and it, it's stuff like that that's like I look at. And it's kind of like the you watch Schindler's List and Shawshank Redemption, and in the middle you're like, I need to watch an episode of The Office, or I need to, <laughs> uh, I need to watch Terminator Two again because you know it's yes. the, in the comic the stuff is like really, you know, if you are in the situation you're like, oh this is bad, but on the outside you're like, this is just crazy. Yeah, I love it though. It, that I love I love crazy stuff. I love all of it. I I love horror stuff. I love serious stuff. But I'm with you. I just like my life. I like a nice balanced meal. 
uh, you know, of, of serious crap here, you know, a little bit of fun trash here. People get me, you know me, I do film sack, and I'm always watching crappy movies, and people are going like, how can you recommend that crappy movie? I'm like, eh, eh. Yeah, just, I, I, I love that. Like, eh. you know, it's, uh, it's, it's escapism. Yes. And I... I think we need a good balance of both. Yes. And so I'm like, you know, if I can be here and I can do something that, you know, yeah, he's a shark and he fights in a gladiatorial arena. So it's going to be violent. Right, but it's right. in that way of like, you know, you watch RoboCop and you're like, you almost <laughs> laugh at the violence because you're like, man, this is so unrealistic and over the top that it's, it, it, it is, almost turns into like a comedy. I actually it's did watch. It's the Monty Python. It really is. And I actually watched RoboCop this past week, it's, oddly enough. I've been watching a lot of crap movies. Oh, who am I kidding? No more than usual. But I have found a, a network channel over the air uh, called Comet. I don't know if you guys seen this or not, but it's uh, it, it may, that, yeah. yeah, it's probably on cable too, but it's it's probably syndicated. But there, you can pick it up over the air, and uh, it all it does is play horrible, horrible, <laughs> terrible movies. I think I watched uh, uh, Arrival, Charlie Sheen. Uh, that's a that is a wild movie. If you've never seen that, uh, stay tuned all the way to the end. I know it'll be tough, but it's it's there. It's got some really weird stuff. Uh, L.A. Uh, what is it? Uh, oh, 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 it was like oh, I can't remember the name of it. I'm gonna forget it. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna struggle. I'm not gonna make you watch me struggle with it. <laughs> but Alien from L.A. I think is what it's called. Something like that. Ooh, yeah, it's good stuff. That's you know, for- that's what my. Uh- Amazon, it's like they don't put the great movies on sale. But no, they put the crap movies on sale. Oh, so yeah. my lineup is just it's good. Oh, that has a goofy cover. I want to watch that. Yep, Alien from L.A. That is actually the name of it. I got it right. It, it had <laughs> Kathy Ireland playing Ooh. as a dumb blonde. <laughs> Get you, you out, don't say. <laughs> right? But uh, Va- a Valley Girl dull life takes a drastic turn after exploring her father's lo- lo- locations. The Lost City of Atlantis. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, anyway, that's good stuff. Hey, now, since we last talked, it's been a while. It's been about a year, right? Andy, it's been about a year. It feels right? like more than a year. It, it might been be. more than a year. You could have been putting me off that long. I think so. It's like, hey, come <laughs> back now. No, no, no. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> we got. We need a little more space in between her Andy <laughs> visits, okay? But no, uh... I, have you made any changes to your to your art toolbox uh, since then? Either through you know either physical tools or maybe mental tools. Uh, or is there a challenge right now that you're currently uh, tackling artistically? Um, I for primarily for Black Finn and I think towards the later part of Cyclops is when I was doing everything on a. Uh, Surface Pro 2, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That, that's kind of my uh, my thing of choice. It's fast, and especially when I was working on Hero Cats, you got to make changes and send them off and get them approved and keep going really fast. And when I started out with Cyclops, I was trying to pencil and ink and everything by hand, and that's great. And I, it's amazing the people who can do that and keep a good schedule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but I am on the move. I'm doing all these cons. I got to be able to draw wherever I am. Put it in a Dropbox. Someone pull it up in the Dropbox. Look at it. Tell me what to change. I can do it on the spot. So that is really uh, my preferred method is digital. And I use uh, Clip Studio. Oh yeah, love that. Which I think yeah is either like somehow associated with Manga Studio or it's what it became. Yeah, or it, it's like what that. It, yeah. I think they I think they changed the name. It was it's always been clip paint i think but then they were like marketing it as manga studio and yeah it's, yeah. A, it's a weird naming convention but i always prefer to call it manga studio because clip studio is like <laughs> that's a dumb name but it sounds yeah it's like you're making gifts or something yeah i don't know it, it always sounds cheap i don't like that but uh yeah i'm with you that's that is a great that is a great tool for your toolbox that uh that has a lot of things that that you wish photoshop had yeah uh, but just doesn't so when people always tool. ask me about it, I, I say, you know, I love Photoshop and I do a lot of coloring in Photoshop. Right. But what Photoshop is set up for is to edit photos. Yes. What? And so it's great. <laughs> I know it's crazy because <laughs> we have found every workaround to make it do everything. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, I feel like Clip Studio is really designed for an artist mm-hmm. um, and like an illustrator. 
I mean, it has a, you know, it says like what kind of workspace you're using. And Comic is one of the preset uh, workspaces. Right. So right. I, I really like the, uh, it's not that it is that different from Photoshop, but mm -hmm. it cuts out the stuff you don't need from Photoshop right. and only leaves the less jumbled in the uh, toolbar and stuff. And the most important part to me that it does is something I always I had to jump through hoops to do, and that's make uh, speech bubbles. Any type of yeah. speech bubbles and stuff. So easy in clip, clip paint. It's just like, clap, drag, Yeah, they've got like, the whole setting for that. It's yeah. just like, you want to make a speech bubble? Like, well, you want a speech bubble? Yeah. Sure. How about, and you want to you drag the tail over? Sure. How long you want it to be? Over here, I got it. It's easy. Point it to this mouth. I dig it. I don't like. The, <laughs> I'm not a big fan of their uh, of their uh, their typography, though. Their the how no. the yeah how the dialogue and stuff works. So I usually I actually end up using going back into Photoshop to do that because Photoshop's got that nailed. Got it. Yeah, nailed. I do a lot of that kind of stuff in Illustrator too. Mm -hmm. Which you know I hate when you have to switch between like ten different applications to get one thing done. But yeah. there's they each just have the thing that they do just a little bit better that makes it just a little bit easier. Oh, yeah. And it's all about finding your flow. Whatever you feel like is like you've got a grasp on. <laughs> I say go with it. I agree. But to me, that's part of the joy of uh, being an artist and the, working digitally, especially. Like, there's like a thousand different ways to get the same result. Yeah. And they all they all work fine. And it's just about finding that one that just happens to work well for you. Yeah, that's what's crazy about, you know, you, you talk to people at cons when I was just starting out. You go ask artists and stuff, and sometimes it almost felt like, oh, do they not want to talk to me or something? Because they're like, really, whatever works for you. But you realize that's actually the, the truth. It's, yeah, you know, just mess around and whatever feels natural. I mean, uh, one of my friends who's also doing a one of the guest artist prints for uh, Blackfin does everything in Illustrator. It's no. all vector art. Wow. And that would be a nightmare for me. Yeah, to me, that is like, I have a hard time. I, in Illustrator, I'm like, why can't I erase anything? <laughs> like, I hit the erase button. Why is it the eraser being like, nope, right. not working. Not working. And for him, I just deleted shit. your entire block. Ah! <laughs> Do you want to select every line you ever made? No, right. I just no. make it too much. It is definitely but, it's definitely a different mindset when you're an illustrator, and I've 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 tried to create art <laughs> that that illustrator was designed for because it's a very specific art design style yeah. that illustrator uh, caters to, and unless you're using that style, like you say, it's like you you think you're like in Photoshop with a raster application where it's like I'll just I'll just take out that little painted area over there. Oh no, <laughs> no why all my objects are gone? Why where layers? I have a layer, and then I have sub layers. When did I make that layer? What I do not crap? remember making that layer. Yeah, and you got to get got to get fancy with the pen tool. Got to learn the pen tool really well. Got to figure out how to drag the anchor points around. It's a it's a good tool, but it's a little it's a little more mechanical than than I prefer as a as an artist. I like to I like to I I do like to work tight, uh, but I I like to work organically and uh, right yeah math mathematically is 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 more the speed of uh, illustrator in my opinion i'm sure someone's found a way to do both but not me not yeah me. his name's alex ogle he is oh, amazing yeah. he's he did uh, if you look on the kickstarter you scroll down to towards the bottom it you can see larger pictures of the guest artist prints mm -hmm. his is the uh high contrast one with the like pink background oh. and it is brave choice it's incredible yeah i i'm you know I see his work and I'm constantly amazed. He's right. actually done like real professional work for uh, Marvel. He worked on the um, the Netflix shows, doing a lot of their oh, stuff yeah. and t-shirt <laughs> designs. Good and... thing we didn't talk crap about the Marvel stuff on Netflix. <laughs> hey man, we're all just freelance, <laughs> right? I didn't make it. I just did this. Yeah, I'm, I'm really digging this. This is, you know, I'm always too scared to use that pink, and it's not really even pink. It's like a what is it, a fuchsia? What is that color? That I'm always afraid to do that. That's that's a brave choice for a a, a dark shot. Good job, yeah. Alex. I love it. Yeah. Just, just so thinking. I've got some awesome people working with me. Um, you know, the book by itself is other than the letters, it's all me. It's all right. Uh, I pencil oh. it. I ink it. I color it. But 
it is so much like everybody else holding me up for that, you know, be, to be able to do this. Um, right. I, you know, we're going to, we're, we're about getting to the point where we usually talk about, uh, what other artists to recommend. And I know you probably have quite a few, but I, I want to know uh, at the bottom there, we just talked about Alex Ogle's work and, and that's, uh-huh. that's beautiful work. Uh, but there's one, a couple of down from that one. And this art style looks familiar to me. Uh, there is, there is, it's, it's a, it's a, uh, a dungeon scene where the, uh, where, where, uh, our, our black fin, uh, is in, in a, in a dungeon or prison of sorts. Getting whipped, getting whipped, getting, getting whipped up <laughs> and also getting cleaned up, but getting whipped. Uh, whose art is this? This looks, this looks familiar to me. That's mine. That is that's that why it looks why? familiar. Is that, that is, is that why that, familiar. because out of yeah. all the stuff down there, that's, that's the most awesome. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hey, if I did it, I'm, I'm sure I'd go with that. <laughs> that's fun stuff. Yeah, that's, fun stuff. that's one of the pages from the book. Yeah, um, it looks amazing. By the way, if you if you haven't che- checked out yet, definitely do. Uh, Blackfin Barbarian Shark on Kickstarter is uh, is shaping up really nice. I love it, love it. Uh, uh, look, so yeah, do do now is the time that Matt steps up and uh, gives us the questions. Question Step. up. Question. Here it is. The question. <laughs> uh, so, who are some other artists that we really need to know about and need to be following and praising their work? <laughs> well, other than me. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I definitely re- recommend the uh, the two artists uh, so far. Um, there could be some more coming along the way that will be uh, some backer stuff. But Alex Ogle... Uh, he's big on Instagram. Um, it's Alex A L E X O G L E. Check out his stuff. He's had many successful Kickstarters. He's the one who's helped me film the, the video for mine. Uh, couldn't do it without him. Really, really awesome. Oh, so, and then so the, good. the other, uh, artist on there, Tim Smith, um, crazy story about him. I was doing a con uh, and I was the featured artist for it. And when I was uh, talking to my family about it, they're like, oh, yeah, um, uh, one of your cousins did. Uh, he was an artist at one of those things. Oh. And turns out this artist that I've been working with for a while turns out to be my cousin. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, what's up, yeah, cuz? So, <laughs> that was a crazy way to meet him. He's like, oh, yeah, I always heard about you. That's funny. Like, we just never. We're never at the same family get-togethers. That is, but he is a—he's an art teacher. Uh, he does a lot of like fantasy art, uh, dragons, and crazy stuff like that. Ooh. He's also got a Instagram. Uh, his name's just Tim Smith. Uh, I'm sure there's only one on Instagram. Right. Let's see. Tim Smith uh, results 500. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Just keep clicking until you find. Right. Uh, I'm gonna uh, put. I'm gonna put Tim Smith, Andy Dugan cousin. Oh yeah, that, that must, that's probably his Instagram name. Right, I, I, I figured I figured as much, but it's, <laughs> let's see. Oh, uh, there's a baseball player. Is always a baseball player. Uh, it's uh, Tim underscore Smith underscore artist. Oh, that's not so bad. No. Nope. Underscore Smith underscore artist. He's the only Tim Smith artist. Lucky. There's like a there's like a Brian Dunaway copyright artist jerk. Ooh. S- squatting on all my names. I'm like, get off. Yeah, copywriter. Who do you think you are? Somebody who knows things as well. Get out <laughs> Someone of my... who got there before me. Right. Someone <laughs> who arrived two seconds before I did. You jerk! I hate you so much. That's, a, that's some really good uh, suggestions there. Uh, we appreciate those, Andy. Andy, uh, can is if if someone listens to the show and they're down at the con, uh, uh-huh. the Rob Con this weekend in Kingsport, Tennessee. Uh, where yep. where can they visit you? Is there is there a table number already? Is there like a location that can they see you in some uh, uh, in some panels? What we got? Uh, you know, for this one, uh, I'm just having a table. Uh, it's kind of just going to be a, an easy con for me, especially because it's within driving distance. So mm-hmm. it's going to be one of my uh, ones that I'm not on any panels or anything. But you can still come by and see me. Uh, I don't I don't know what my booth number is yet, but. Uh, it we'll should not you. be hard to find me at all. We'll and on find Instagram you. and all that, I'll, I'll post all the updates about 
where I am and what I'm next to. <laughs> I'm I am uh, on the floor and I'm next to a trash can. Always where <laughs> I they. Mean, that's how you're like. Are you next to the TARDIS? Are you next right. to the 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 dragon that kids can ride on? Nope. It's like ah. Uh, uh, always right, right. I'm next to the 15 stormtroopers, yeah. uh, doing Gangnam style. That's it. That's the guys. I've seen those guys. <laughs> Bunch of jerks. All right. Well, Andy, thanks so much for being on part two of the Andy Dugan episodes. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you got to get back to doing the work, uh, doing the coloring. You're busy man, busy man. And I've got to go buy some cards and open some packs <laughs> and see if I can get me some sweet, sweet. Andy Dugan. Uh, yeah, is there, stay it, around uh, part three. Uh, yeah. I'll be, I'll be in Carbonite. <laughs> uh, there will be <laughs> a giant slug that will have me hostage, and teddy bears will win. It, it happens. That will be that will be part three of Comments Coast to right. Coast. With- we, we can't wait. And I'm going to title it that, too, when you come back. <laughs> oh, please so, do. Right. Uh, is there any place? That, where's the best place? to Just follow you on Instagram, best place, social media-wise? Instagram's the best. Um, yeah. I've got a Facebook, too. Uh if I do any kind of long form, like I need to tell you something right. that that will be where it is. Cause it's a little bit better for, uh, the type and stuff out, Makes but sense. pretty much any, any big information about where I'm going to be or what convention or, uh, I've been trying to post updates about the Kickstarter, uh, some behind the scenes stuff, which is really cool. Um, cause there's even one of the goals in it is, mm. uh, a, a sketchbook that has some unused concept art and mm. character sketches and all that. And I'm posting some samples of those on my Instagram pretty much every day. So Excellent. really fun stuff to follow. Excellent. Well, that's great. Uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, Matthew Descharm of Matt the Wad. Where can people visit you? Best place to look is on YouTube. Just do a search for Matt the Wad or Matthew Descharm. Excellent. Uh, follow that Joel Duggan of uh, Starcross Online. I believe it is uh, Twitter at uh, Joel Duggan. Isn't it? I think that's just all there is to it. I think there is. Uh, follow all the things that we do. Wait, wait. Do mine first, Brian. Okay. Uh, follow me at <laughs> the Brian Dunaway on Twitter, BrianDunaway.com website. Uh, follow everything we do on uh, ComicsCoastToCoast.com. Uh, we are on Twitter at Comics c to c I'd like to thank our patrons who will receive this uh, episode about 24 hours prior to regular release. Uh, and so you'll get a chance to uh, enjoy the episode just a little bit early. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to be a patron supporter, head on over to patreon.com forward slash Comics c to c That's it. Uh, I guess we are done then. And we'll see you guys next week.
This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. We're going to do a show. Let's do this thing. Andy. Yes. You good to go? I'm good. Excellent. Just when I need to talk. Matthew Deschamps, are you ready to rumble? All right. Yeah, I guess so. All yep. Right. Good. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say three countdowns silently after that, and then we'll start the show. Let me get the show notes up. Everybody's good. Everybody got a pee? All right. Good. Good. Hold it. Hold it. All right. Here we go. And three, 